Camelot 331 here, and I know uh, present day, everyone kind of understands that uh, GameStop's a pretty shady and a pretty terrible company. And I want to clear the air just a little bit. I worked at GameStop for 11 years, as you know. And it didn't start out that way. And a lot of people think it did. And yeah, there were signs of it from the beginning, of course. You know, as there are always signs in the beginning of someone's life of the darkness that's coming. <laughs> Trust me, I know all about that shit. No, no. But for real, GameStop was a bright spot in my life at the beginning. I really enjoyed the place. And there was a lot of crazy stuff that went on that kind of attributed to me realizing the exact moment where it all went wrong and when I finally understood that this wasn't a place I loved, this wasn't a place that took care of me, this was a place they didn't care whether I lived or died. A place that would gladly let their grandparents die just so they could make an extra $5 on a paycheck or a stock option. That's how this is, okay? That's how this is, and I realized it. But I'm gonna tell you what led to this moment because it's actually pretty crazy. So before we get into this, make sure you like this video and share it with your boys. Make sure you follow me on Odyssey, it's in the description. And uh, make sure you get the hell on it, doggone it. So when I first started at GameStop, I started at a small store, and my manager was a pretty terrible person that I come to find out later. I called him Egg, because he's shaped like a damn egg. He's a big man, he's a big man. 500 pounds of pure ass, steaming, terrible human. And, uh, <laughs> I mean that in the non way my nicest way possible. But I learned right away, uh, some pretty shady things from this man that he encouraged me to do. And this will tie in to everything I'm about to tell you. One of the first lessons that I learned at GameStop was Egg would tell me to do a certain thing with things called pro cards. So pro cards in the GameStop spectrum was cards that got you 10% off of the used games you bought in the store at the time. It's no longer like that, but back then it was like that. So Egg had a little trick. We had price changes, I believe every Wednesday or Thursday. I can't really remember now. But games would go down in price very often, okay? So what Egg told us to do is he would say, leave the expensive games, you know, the old price up. For example, $49.99. And do not put the new sticker that says $29.99 on the box. Therefore, it doesn't appear $20 cheaper like it actually is. So he would be like, hey, just add on the pro card, which is $14.99, and their total is only $44, looking like they saved $5 in the actual transaction. But the game was actually on sale for $29.99. It just didn't display that price on the sticker. So that's what Egg told us to do. And I always thought this was really strange, but at the beginning I was real stupid and I thought this was the way I was supposed to do things. You know, thinking back, hindsight's 2020, baby. And uh, that was pretty shady. Um, and it's something that I did not continue after leaving Egg's presence because I was trained by another person that taught me the real way to do everything. And as you probably know, he was terminated right away because he was too legit for GameStop. Another thing that didn't prove to me the shadiness of GameStop, <laughs> not yet anyway, none of these things really spoke to me until the last thing on this list. But Egg would tell me to add the gameplay guarantee or the pro card onto a transaction of a person that doesn't speak English as their native language. So in my area, we had a lot of people from Mexico and they would always shop at our store and a lot of them didn't really speak English. So Egg told me to just add that bitch on there because they wouldn't know any different. Okay, and this is a theme that kept going on through GameStop, and my district manager kind of reverberated. But they said, add it on there, baby. Add that bitch right on there. It'll be great. It'll be fine. Now, Egg Store always ranked pretty much number one in our entire district, and I'll lead you to understand why. I'm pretty sure you can come to the conclusion. <laughs> It's because he was shady as hell. Now, everyone was pretty much doing these things because RDM encouraged all of this. But Egg, he not only was Egg a good salesman, but he was also shady as hell. So you combine those two and it's a dangerous man. Not only was he 500 pounds and if he falls on you, you would likely die, but also he was a dangerous salesman. So keep that in mind. So Egg was a peculiar man and he had something he liked to do. He would leave at 1 p.m., but he would stay on the clock 
because he was supposed to stay until five, but he would leave at one, stay on the clock, and he would go to one of his friend's house. And at that friend's house, they would partake in the, the prostitutes, the hookers. And I'm not talking about good ones, all right? It was in Alabama, a small city in Alabama. So you can imagine the quality of hooker was not very up to par, all right? I'm talking, who Lord, like 60 years old and drapey as hell. But anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> But eventually my district manager caught on to this little, uh, little excursion and he told Egg that you're not allowed to leave the store anymore and ride the clock. Now, you're thinking to yourself, wow, why did your district manager not fire him? Well, it's because Egg's store ranked so well and that's all that mattered to the GameStop overlords was that delicious green, delicious, hot, juicy, baby gravy money. That's all, <laughs> that's all that mattered was the number, baby. And Egg was good at delivering that number. So the hookers, yeah. No big deal. Riding the clock, which is called time card fraud, also no big deal. It's totally fine. But Egg decided he wasn't going to give up the game just yet. So he decided to start bringing the, uh, his lady friends <laughs> to the store through, through the front door and to the back room. And he kept doing this. Okay, all the, up, all the way up until the point where I was gone. And now I do got to give him some credit because eventually he started letting them in the back door <laughs> so the kids wouldn't see them when they walked in. So it was fine. A lot better, a lot better of an environment. But eventually I started understanding that the things that Egg was doing was not really uh, up to scuff or correct. Probably very illegal. Yes, I will say actually <laughs> very illegal. But, but look, one thing he did was when people would bring in Xbox 360s because they were the hot ticket at the, at, at the time. People would bring those in and he would he would offer cash for the trade-in, which was fine, right? Because at GameStop you can get cash for trade-ins. But Xbox 360's got one 110 credit, $110 credit, and $80 cash. Egg would offer them $30 cash and not show them the screen on the computer. And if they accepted, which they usually did because you know it was trying times and it's a small town, <laughs> he would give them $30 cash. He would then turn it around after they walked out and sold it to somebody for $100. We sold them in the store for like $149 or $199 or whatever. So Egg was quite literally just had his own business going without GameStop being involved. They never got a receipt or nothing. Okay. So everybody saw this happening, including y'all, uh, y'all's truly dumbass right here. So I decided, hey, let's get together with the associates. Let's call our HR department and, uh, Get this man out of here, right? Keep in mind, this was like 2008, I think. So we call HR. We let them know what's going on. My regional director and my district manager come into the store about a week later and confiscate all the videotapes. Yes, VHS tapes. We were still using them because GameStop was a damn dinosaur. A little tidbit, GameStop never updated their computers. We used the same ones since the day I started working there in 2007, all the way to 2018 when I left. But we had VHSs for security tapes. So the regional director and the district manager came in to look through these tapes. Now, luckily, the district manager gave Egg the heads up and Egg deleted all the tapes. So it all worked out, baby. And Egg never got fired. Even though all of this evidence was mounted, mounted, mounted against him, he never got fired, nor did he get a talking to. All right. Because his store ranked number one. That's just how it was. That's all GameStop cared about. I do need to reiterate, this ties in to the end of the whole damn video. So fast forward about a year, and I became a store manager. I got my own store. I was out from under the egg. I was able to spread my wings and fly. <laughs> I was going to have a good ass time. And I was going to do it legit because I had a store manager in a, a short uh, month, like three month period after egg that trained me up. And taught me how to do everything the right way. And that was, this This man is a god. I still talk to him to this day. He's a great man. And of course, he got let go a few months later because he just didn't rank as well because he was legit. You can't get 100% GPGs. It's not possible statistically. So, <laughs> he was gone. But Egg stayed. Hookers and all. Well, right away, I'm a pretty decent salesman, I think. And I ranked really, really well. And it also culminated with the store across the street from me closing. So there was two GameStops within like a walking distance for some reason. The one across the street actually closed. So I got all their sales. So I was ranking extremely, extremely well. My district manager at first was all pumped about it. But after about a month, didn't give a damn. We were ranking number second, number first, number third. And I mean in the country. 
not for our district or region, for the country. My district manager didn't give a shit. And if I ever ranked out of the top 500, suddenly he had a problem. So it was almost like he expected me to rank that well. And then if I didn't, I was suddenly a bad egg, even though the rest of our district wasn't even in the top 2000. So that was very frustrating. And it started to turn the tide for me to understand what's actually going on. It's called, what have you done for me lately? Your district manager or your regional director, whoever is your, uh, your above, you know, manager, they don't only care for what you did today. They don't care for what you did yesterday. So that's why you're expendable and completely replaceable and at a lower rate, let's be honest. Now, after this next moment, you would think I would be like, yeah, this is shady. I'm out. Well, not really. So my district manager, my regional director came to my store to visit because my store ranked 97th in the entire country, which put me on an elite list of people. It was pretty crazy. My regional director wanted to come talk to me about it. So he did. And I was really pumped about it because I was like, woo, we did good. You know, finally, some of that sweet, sweet validation that I craved so desperately because I was in my 20s and dumb as hell. Well, not only was he unfriendly and kind of unprofessional to me, he also uh, was very, very mean and uh, just dug into me. And I know I said unfriendly and mean in the same breath, but he dug into me and was like complaining about stuff that didn't matter. Like I was missing a small sign that didn't even have an ad on it. It just said like pre-owned 360 games on the wall. And he drilled me for it. And he said my sink in my bathroom was not clean enough. So he drilled me for it. And my district manager drilled me right afterwards. He left and he sent out a company-wide email, the regional director. And he said, just because you rank 97th in the country does not make you a good manager, which was directed at me now, luckily, he didn't say my name to embarrass me further, but it destroyed every single fabric of everything I knew because I thought I was doing a good job. But it turns out it was what you've done for me lately. That's how it worked, because up till this point on the current year, I was ranking average. The previous year, I was on fire. So what have you done for me lately? So fast forward a couple of years, and I've kind of lost hope at this point. But at one point, um, my ex-wife told me that she was going to be leaving. And uh, it kind of broke me as a person. And now, look, I was still doing my job. I was still on the register. I was still going ham. And I was still trying to do my due diligence to be successful. Because to be honest, the paycheck's what was keeping me alive, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm not trying to die today. All right. And also, I'm kind of institutionalized. It's like prison, which is the same thing as GameStop to me. But my ex-wife had told me. And, you know, things slipped a little bit and not much. I never ranked really that bad. It was probably 1,500 out of 4,000, which is like top 35%, but it's fine. You know, things started to slip and, you know, I got a little bit more quiet, less outgoing because I was dealing with it, but I was still doing my job. Well, my district manager shows up out of nowhere and he uh, takes me to the back room and he tells me, uh, I probably should consider resigning because it looks like I'm not up to the task anymore. Now imagine that for a moment, like really actually imagine it. Your district manager comes in and he's like, hey, I know you're going through a divorce right now and you've been with your ex-wife for a long time and this is like a crazy thing that's happened to you and you're not expecting it. But uh, hey, how about you resign because you're sucking real bad lately? That's pretty much how it went. And that's very e inhuman, in my opinion. And that's when my opinion of him, which was never really that good, went to almost pure hatred after he left that day. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do everything I can to not try. And I never did again. I never tried at all. Now, to be honest, after my regional director or my district manager told me that, you know, my store wasn't a good store because I, my bathroom, whatever, that was, that was pretty much the turning point. But... When that, when my district manager told me that and was like, Hey, you should resign. Yeah, that was it. I was like, Nope, never trying again. And my dude, I went to like last, <laughs> which understandably so. But none of those things I mentioned was the exact moment that I realized GameStop was a heartless cutthroat shady ass corporation that deserved every single fist to be thrown at their faces, which is what I dedicated my life to for a short period of time. <laughs> As you are aware, no, my district manager came in one day. He took me to the back room and he sat me down and he was like, look, you know, a lot of people are trying new strategies to get GPGs because it used to be we wanted, they wanted us to get like five to 8% GPGs, which actually statistically is very possible. 
That's only like five out of a hundred or eight or 10 out of a hundred, but might be actually doable as well. Even though the GPG, the great, the gameplay guarantee that GameStop sells you actually is completely irrelevant and it's 100% profit for them. The manager can actually return or not return a game at their discretion. Actually has no, no bounding on if you get a GPG or not, especially not if it's on switch or DS or some shit. It's a cartridge guys. Come on. But he sat me down and he's like, Cody, a lot of districts and regions have been trying a new strategy for the, the GPGs and the pro cards. And this is the first time that I've ever heard my district manager say something like this. He said, you need to start learning and using the assumptive approach. You want to know what the assumptive approach is? The assumptive approach is when you assume the customer wants these things, you do not tell them about these things and you add them onto the transaction. If they fuss, then you return it, but not before you tell them the benefits after they had already bought it. So what that means guys in layman terms, the one year warranty, okay. Or the pro card, they wanted us to add those on to transactions without telling anyone. And I know you've heard this. It's actually been in the news lately. My district manager, who was a field manager who technically worked for corporate for GameStop, said the regional director, who is still there to this day, okay, his name's Wade, that we were supposed to just add them on. My district manager told me this, to add them on without telling, using the assumptive approach, which in my opinion is theft. But apparently it's not against the law. And if you even Google this, you'll find it immediately. And I've been talking about it for years. That is the exact moment I realized GameStop, field management and all above were criminals and they were thieves. And the only thing stopping them from getting arrested is a gray area in the damn law because they got a corporation. They got the, uh, the GameStop incorporated little dot behind their name so they can do whatever the hell they want. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they threw a children just one children out of a window and he splatted. All right. And they'd be like, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. And I know that made no sense, but I'm just trying to, you know, convey a point that GameStop can do no wrong. And lately in the news, they've garnered a lot of positive media attention because a man named Ryan Cohen became an activist investor and pushed everybody out, including the CEO. Now, granted, he made a couple hundred million dollars for accepting his resignation, <laughs> which I wish I could be fired and get $200 million, but that's whatever. Ryan Cohen went in and took over. He did the same thing at Bed Bath & Beyond, but uh, he bankrupted them recently by pulling out all of his shares. So rest in peace to them. But unfortunately, it's not the company you think it is. And you probably understand already. You've been watching my channel, you know. Okay. But the exact moment I realized that they weren't who I thought they were, and I kind of got this feeling for a long time, was when my DM personally asked me, to rob people and I was never going to be okay with that, especially after I left egg and knew that that wasn't the right thing to do. I was never going to do it again. And I didn't. And only, only one month later, my district manager and the head of HR was in my store, ready to terminate me over some random false bullshit. And that's where the story ends because I refused. Therefore I was tossed to the side like a bitch. Now, granted, <laughs> Granted, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me because it brought me to you. And now we get to sit in bed every night and cuddle and kiss each other on the forehead and tell each other everything's going to be all right. So if you like this video, if you don't, you dislike GameStop or most brick and mortar corporations, give it a like, give it a share, give me a kiss or right on the tip of my pee pee or my nose, <laughs> whichever you prefer. <laughs> that's a joke. Damn it. Come on now. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys understand more about the insides of GameStop and how they run because to this day, they're doing the exact same thing. My district manager is still there. My old regional is still working there right now and no one's ever going to do anything to change that. So please share this to fight them and show them they bitches, <laughs> I guess. Thank you guys. Get the hell on it, dog on it. Ah, uh, yeah. Ooh.